Alright, what's going on everyone? William from Cinnamon New here and welcome back to another video. This video will teach you how to host your Discord bot on Heroku. And we had a video uh, made on uh, how to host your bot on Heroku already, but there were a lot of comments that were complaining about how it was poorly made and it just didn't work. So I decided to remake this video and I didn't have time up until now, so here we are. So let's actually get started. First, I wanna get some explaining out of the way. So the first thing you would need is obviously a bot. So if you're asking how I got these files, then you must be doing something wrong already and you don't have a bot set up. And if you don't have a bot set up, you can't host a bot. So if you want to know how to make your own bot, check out the tutorial series that you can see right now on top of the screen. But of course, that is a little bit old, I know, but they, if, if you try to keep it up to date, it should still technically work if you make some slight refactoring. Uh, but other than that, let's get back into our uh, coding, so uh, into our code. So there are a few things we need to change. So the first thing you want to go into is your packets.json and check out what the main file is. Uh, mine is index.js. So when you do npm in it, it will say the main file, it will tell you to set up the main file. Uh, whatever the main file is, you probably have this kind of line of code along the lines of client.login. Uh, wherever that is, that's the file you're going to open. And we have ourselves config.token setup. Um, this is quite an important bit to change because we're going to be using GitHub to host our bots' files because Heroku is a simple way to deploy our a repository or a just a, an application in general. So what we need is a way to host our files and we're going to be using GitHub for that because not only is GitHub free to use but it's, it's used for version control which is ideal and we can simply keep our files up there 24-7 and also access them as well. So um, ideally when you're developing you would have a GitHub repository set up already and that's how you would host your bot. Now here's the thing, uh, because it will be on GitHub repository, even if you edit the file in GitHub, uh, people can still revert your commit and see your order commits and see your token. And that's why what we want to do is to make sure that our token is never on GitHub, even if we make it a private repository just to be safe. So how do we make this variable or our token completely private but still enable our bot is by using something we call an environment variable. And to set up an environment variable, we do process.env, which says, stands for environment, dot, and then the variable. I'm going to call it token in, in this case. And we call token with a with a capital letters, full caps, um, because this is a naming convention of where uh, when a variable is global, it it's better to have it completely um, capitalized. Uh, in a, in a sense, in a way, why is an environment variable completely um, global? It's because an environment variable is set up on your system. And on your system, you can access that variable in any files, in programs. So if you have a token here, you should be able to set it up. So how do you set up an environment variable on your local computer? There are two ways. Uh, the first way is to open your CMD, your command prompt, PowerShell, whatever, and I believe it's the set command and you get to set the variable. Okay, uh, all of my environment variables are showing so I'm just going to private all of this by blurring it out. Um, so you would use, um, so basically you would set token equals to your bots token being here, right? You don't need the uh, the quotation marks. You can just go ahead and do that, and you'll be able to set a new environment variable. Alternatively, you can go ahead and go ahead and press start, open your Cortana, and then inside here type in environment. And in in theory, it should already search. Um, it, it should already search for edit the system environment variables. And once you have that, click on environment variables and everything you see is here. I already have my token set up here. I'm pretty sure if it isn't, then I have no idea. Okay, looks like I have them. So good, uh, good way to explain this is to go ahead and quickly go over to our config.json. 
uh, which I'm going to go ahead and blur out my token right now. We're going to go ahead and copy our token here, and we can just go ahead and paste, a, create a new token, and we're going to create a, a new variable. Variable name is token. Variable value is our bots token. Now, alternative. Now, I can do this, but alternatively, we can create a .env file to hold it, to hold the the token. So basically, you can create a dot .env. And this should create an environment um, variable storehouse, or like it's just going to hold all the environment variables for this particular uh, project. Now you can go ahead and do that, but for now I'm just going to go ahead and keep it simple and set it up on my computer itself. So we have environment variable set up. Now what you want to do is go back to our config.json and we completely delete uh, the variable or the token from our config. Just remove it completely. Just remove it. We only have our prefix left. So the next thing we want to do is pretty much the same thing. Uh, if you have any other uh, APIs that you're using that uses a token or API keys, you might want to set it up as an environment variable. So this here is the variable and whatever you set in your, in, in, into your system environment variable, that's what is going to get accessed here. So in theory, my bot should still start. So if I run CMD and then node uh, index.js, uh, you can see my bot still started even though I have already removed the token because I set that up in my environment variable. Now this is important, as I've said, for security purposes. The next thing you would need to do is to set up a thing called a proc file, and this is needed by Heroku to start your application with the dyno. So by creating a new file, click a uh, type in proc file. And then without any extensions, as you can see, the proc file has a Heroku icon on it. Now this might be this might not be true. This might be because of the icon pack that I'm using. But make sure if if it doesn't show, make sure you have proc file written properly with a capital P R O C F I L E proc file without any extensions. Okay. Now what you will need to do is create a worker by typing in worker colon. Uh, this will say this worker here is going to run node index.js. This is basically telling our Heroku application to run this command to start our bot. This is very important. So once you've got this set up, um, you're pretty much ready to go. So you've got your proc file, you've got your config with, with your prefix, all of your files are ready. So if you have your node modules folder, you can you might as well delete it because you're not going to be needing it. So the next thing we'll need to do is create a new repository. Okay, so we create a new repository. We can name it whatever we want. Hostbot tutorial, uh, hostbot tut. That would do the job. A description if you want to uh, have a description for your bot. Uh, you can go ahead and go to your package JSON and just go ahead and copy the same description if you want to. Um, whatever you want. And now here's the thing, we have public and private repository. Um, you can set it to either. I'm going to choose private because I don't want anyone to edit or see the source code of my bot. So I'm going to make it private. Now why would a private repository works is because when you go onto Heroku uh, to get your repository, uh, you're basically authenticating your GitHub account. And once you authenticate your GitHub account, th this repository is uh, belongs to you and thus you will be able to see it in Heroku as well, uh, even though it is a third party app. So as long as you're authenticated as the owner of the repository, you will see it regardless of it being public or private. So keeping, a, so keeping it private is completely fine. And next, you can go ahead and create a readme file if you want to. You you don't need it, um, but whichever one you want, you can go ahead and start a readme file, which is just going to use the description as the default readme, or you can just completely st uh, skip the step. Okay, and you can add a license if you want to add the dot git ignore, uh, but we don't need to worry about these because we're not version controlling. We're just using these as a host, so we're just gonna. Go ahead and create the repository.
So once the repository is is created, you will be met with this screen right here. So if you're going to be doing version control, so like uh, you're going to be control, you be using Git to push updates, to revert commits, to revert to older versions, to create branches. Basically, your bot is still under development, but you want to host it, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which is personally what I would recommend, uh, since version control is really nice. Um, you're going to go ahead and get, uh, do all of these commands, make a git in it, uh, you will set up all of the git related stuff on your computer. But um, since we don't need to worry about those, we don't need to worry about this. But you may be wondering where the hell is the upload button, then it's right here. And the reason why it's so hidden is probably because it's not meant for you to upload files, it's meant for you to use git as it should, like commit and push. Um, but yeah, right, so once you click the upload button, we just drag all of our files minus the node modules folder. All right, we're just gonna copy all our files and then drag and drop it here. So if you have too many files, GitHub won't like it and you will have to break it into separate parts. So for example, if you have like over maybe 50 commands, or even hundreds of commands for whatever reasons, then you're going to have to go in the commands folder and then upload little by little and then until you've got all your commands uploaded onto GitHub. And then you're gonna go ahead and click commit changes, all right? So, um, what I was about to say is, you wanna make sure you don't upload the node modules folder. I'm about to explain why, right? So if you go into your package.json, you will see the dependencies, you see there is discord.js, right? Uh, the dependency is the important bit here. So if we go ahead and delete our node modules folder, which I'm not going to bother doing, if we open our uh, CMD, uh, we can go ahead and type npm i or npm install. This will install every dependency that is written in our package.json dependencies uh, object here. So what Heroku does, it looks through the package.json, look for this dependencies object, look for every dependencies, including the version number, and install the correct version and correct module. Uh, so you don't have to worry about the node modules folder, and Heroku would do that for you already, so you don't have to worry about anything. Right, so once you have your um, repository set up for your Heroku, um, application, your Heroku host bot. So you can go ahead and start going into Heroku now. So I've already got an account, I've already got a bot that is running a Python, um, but, uh, sorry, an application that's running Python, but you wouldn't have this if you're new to Heroku, obviously. Uh, you might want to go ahead and register an account if you don't already have one. I'm not going to go through the process of registering an account because it's pretty much the same in every website, right? You might be met with something like this here, right? You're gonna click show next steps if you don't already have it, or you might be met with this screen. So the first thing you will need to do is create a new application. And in here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna name our application something. So we're gonna go ahead and say host bot. Let's just hope it's not taken. It's, it's available, nice. Next, choose a region. I'm gonna choose Europe because it's close to uh, it's closer to me. You might, if you're from the US, then obviously go ahead and choose US. If you're from anywhere from Europe, choose Europe. Uh, for me, I'm closer to Europe. And we don't have to worry about pipeline. Pipeline is, I have no idea what it is, to be honest. I think it's something to do with the client, to the command line interface for Heroku. But we don't need to worry about that because we're gonna do everything in the Heroku dashboard because it has a very nice dashboard. So once you've set the app name, the region, just create app. And once you clicked on create app, before we do anything, we're gonna head over to our settings. Right, we're gonna go ahead and click uh, you're gonna click on your settings uh, for our host bot uh, we're gonna uh, you should be able to go ahead and scroll down and see this uh, this section called config vars and this is where you set up your environment variables you're gonna go ahead and click reveal config vars we'll see a key and a value the key will be the variable which is token as we set up here and now we need our actual token. So we're just going to go ahead and paste. Oh no, um, what's my token? 
Okay, so I got my token. Now we're just going to go ahead and paste our token inside the value, and we're going to go ahead and click Add. And once we clicked Add, it would be saved inside our our um, our config here, our uh, environment variable. This is essentially like a .env file that's built into the Heroku dashboard, uh, but you don't need to worry about this, right? So you, of course you have the key and you also have the value um, for so you can add more environment variables in. So if you have more API keys, maybe you have a a, a music bot that's using the YouTube API key. You may have something like YouTube API, and then go ahead and type in the YouTube API key in the value, and then click Add, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's how it's going to work. Uh, the build packs, you don't have to worry about it unless you're doing something again like music bot. You might want to have a build pack for FFmpeg, and Node, uh, Node Opus, Opus Script, whatever. Uh, all of that set up, right? So build packs is for that. And you don't have to worry about SSL certificate and domain because you're using a bot. You won't, it's not a web application, so you don't have to worry about those. So once you've got that, uh, we can go ahead and head over to deploy. And we're going to go ahead and choose to connect to our GitHub. So you can see there's Heroku Git, uh, which is the uh, Heroku CLI or command line interface where you use our command line to do everything. So basically our console to do everything. But again, we're going to use our dashboard to do everything because it has a very nice dashboard. So we're going to go ahead and click a GitHub Connect. We're going to connect to GitHub, as you can see. So if, if this doesn't show up, you might need to log in with your GitHub account and authorize your GitHub account. So make sure you do that. Next, just go ahead and click on uh, the host bot to tut here. And then go ahead and paste in the repo name and search and press search. This in theory, there you go, it's found it. All you have to do is press connect. And once you press connect, you can go ahead and press deploy branch and it should be deployed. If you go over to activity, you should see view build progress and you should see everything is being done properly. You can see caching the build of node modules, it's the build is successful. Now, if we head over to our resources, you should see that we have no process yet. So let's reload this page real quick, and we should see our node index.js uh, worker. And of course, normally what you would do is click on a proc file, um, not proc file, sorry, package JSON, and you have a test script here, right? Uh, normally, you're going to go ahead and put start, and this would run and then you type in node index.js here. Uh, but since we are not using an npm start script, we're just going to go ahead and edit this, turn this off, click this, turn this on, and click confirm. So basically we're switching npm start for node index.js, uh, which is an important thing to do. Um, but yeah, of course, uh, if you already have um, if you already have npm start set up in package.json, of course use that by by a many, a, by every means. Um, it's probably better to use npm start as well, but uh, since we set up the worker for index.js, that's completely fine. So let's go ahead and head back over to activity. You should see, oh, there you go. The bot is now turned on. So now if we do slash uh, our test command, voila, it works and everything works and is hosted properly on Heroku. So uh, I think that's all I can explain really. It's a very simple process that I'm trying to maximize the amount of explanation I can put on this. Again, if you have any issues, you can go ahead and query down in the description, uh, sorry, in the comment section for any questions. Of course, you can also join our Discord server and ask for help there as well. So. I think that's about it. I don't think I missed anything. Uh, you got the package JSON, you got the index.js, you got the proc file, and uh, you got the environment variables. You've got it set up on uh, GitHub, a private repository, a uh, set it up on Heroku dashboard. Uh, that everything is pretty nicely set up, and I don't think I have missed anything. If I have, then please make sure to comment down below and tell me what else you need help with. Uh, but other than that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode, or in the next video.